In today's video, I'm going to look at the lives and careers of two of the internet's most infamous vegan YouTubers. You may already be aware of them, but hopefully today I'll be able to paint a more complete picture and shed some light on their various misdeeds throughout their online careers. So grab some fruit and buckle up as I tell you the story of Leanne Ratcliffe, aka Freely the Banana Girl, and Harley Johnston, better known as Durian Ryder. Cue the intro. Hello, little frugivores. Feelings. Feelings are a luxury. Just to hear me more. Ended up outside my door, just randomly, uninvited. He's only human. There's certain nationalities are a bit more prone to causing problems in Australia. And he's a pretty f***ing special human. So you've got nothing better to do in your life, do you? Because you're a cunt. Leanne Ratcliffe is an Australian influencer who's constructed her brand around diet, health, and veganism. You may think that doesn't sound too bad, healthy living is more important than ever, and in a world where it's increasingly hard to eat nutritious food and stay active, someone who's built a career around teaching others to live healthily must have nothing but good intentions at heart. However, Ratcliffe has no such philanthropical goals. Whilst she maintains a thin facade of being an educator and activist, throughout her career she's primarily used her platform to tear down and bully others for their appearance, weight, and life choices. Sending her swarms of nutrition-deprived fans to attack her rivals, and naturally made sure to make a nice bit of money in the process. The other subject of today's video is her now ex-partner Harley Johnstone, aka Durian Ryder, whose online career has followed a similar path to Leanne's. The two were virtually inseparable during their relationship and joint online careers, hence you can't really talk about one without mentioning the other. But I'll make it clear, these two are not the same kinds of people, and I'll explain why later. Today I'm going to go through their respective lives, and their many controversies up until the present day. And also don't worry, this video isn't going to be a haha aren't vegans annoying type of video, I think as a culture we've thankfully moved on from from 2016. As for the people in this video, their veganism is rarely the source of conflict, it's instead their militant promotion of their own diets and lifestyle, and a lack of common respect for those with differing opinions that frequently places them in hot water. The only other comprehensive video covering these two was by Sid Dwyer, it's a good video, he's, he's made a couple on these two, you know, go give him a watch. But, but, but you see, Sid has sponsors and loved ones waiting for him at home, so, so he can't go in as hard as I'll be going. In the video I'll be discussing both their controversies as well as their lives, so if you want to skip to a specific event, you know, time codes below. Everything will be presented in as chronological order as I can achieve. A lot of the events that will be mentioned overlap or took place over multiple years slash months, but just for the sake of structuring the video, I'll group certain things together, so if you notice something out of order, it's not deliberate, I promise. So without further ado, let's start with the origin story of Freely the Banana Girl. There's surprisingly little information on Leanne prior to her debut on the internet and transition to banana-themed supervillain, and most of what we do know comes from her own mouth in the form of interviews or her own works. She was born on a farm somewhere near Queensland, Australia, a farm that grew fruit, vegetables, and also had a significant population of livestock, meaning growing up she consumed animal products, and for the first 26 years of her life, she would consume meat on a regular basis. One childhood story she fondly remembers is her dad encouraging her and her siblings to eat bananas, advising them to have one every day when they pass the banana tree that grew right outside their front door. Throughout her childhood, Leanne was heavily involved in competitive sport, boasting that at primary school she was undefeated in the sprint race. She would also take up kickboxing and gymnastics, all this sport inspiring her to commit her life and career to fitness. At 16 years of age, she landed a job at McDonald's and so out of convenience began eating there frequently. She blames this situation for a sudden increase in her weight and deterioration of her health. Now, but let's be fair, working at Mackey's in the 90s with the big breakfast for 2 95 on top of staff discount, you know, I think even the best of us will get a little bit rotund. Hi, may I take your order, please? I'll have a after graduating high school, she would study dietetics. <laughs> dietetics. <laughs> However, she commented on her disappointment that her professor was obese and yet was allowed to teach about nutrition. She would later compare it to going to a homeless person on the street and asking them for financial advice. Even this early on, you can see the qualities that would define her later infamy. That being a, shall we say, aggressive disdain for people who she deems to be unhealthy, with little regard for any other factors that may impact the way someone looks or eats. As well as her basing her diagnosis for healthy on soul visual indicators. On top of this degree, Leanne would earn a sizable collection of nutrition and fitness related certificates that she proudly displays on her website with the help of a broken link. Ooh. I have been at this for a very long time, studying nutrition non-stop since I was in my late teens. And that's why I have the healthy results that I do. 
because I didn't stop until I found the answer. At 21, she would start a career as a personal trainer, and around this time, she would move to Sydney, and here would start dating a drug dealer, and fall into a cycle of substance abuse, featuring cocaine, ecstasy, and probably more that she hasn't yet mentioned. Presumably related to her use of drugs, her self-esteem would plummet, and in an attempt to control her weight, she would become bulimic. Even after leaving her partner, she would still struggle with depression, gaining weight and being sedated by a cocktail of both prescribed and recreational drugs. Her eating habits remained volatile, leading to her having in her own words, foul, explosive diarrhea. As a personal trainer, this lifestyle was certainly less than ideal for the stability of her career, and even after weaning herself off drugs, she still describes feeling disgusted with her body, as well as her other physical imperfections such as acne. Around this time, she would also take up extra work as a stripper, after being encouraged by a friend and seeing the potential money such a profession could bring in. When recounting the experience, she mentioned how she was encouraged to manipulate men into spending more money on drinks by forming a quick yet superficial emotional bond. She also says she worked as a promoter for alcohol. I would have thought in Australia alcohol didn't really need to be promoted. I, 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 I think the word's already out on that one. <laughs> I don't think anyone with functional empathy can feel anything but sorry for Leanne so far. It's clear in her early adult life she was in a darker place than most others will or should ever experience. Everyone can relate in some way to feeling dissatisfied with one's own body, and Leanne being a personal trainer and stripper would have all the more reason to obsess over her own physical appearance than most. Her life would finally take a definitive turn for the better after a trip to Greece in 2006, where she ate nothing but souvlaki and gyros. She was, in her own words, so disgusted at herself and her her own body that she finally gained the motivation to change her lifestyle for the better. To bring about this change, she decided a sharp alteration in her eating habits was needed. And how would one go about this in the mid-2010s? Why, with a fad diet, of course. In her attempts to change her diet, she would spend thousands of Australian pounds on various guides and consultations with experts. How the f*** do you spend thousands on diet information? Just go to f***ing Tesco, buy some mixed veg, only cost me what, like £1.50? One fateful day, however, she would meet with a man by the name of Dr. Doug. I would, I would love to know what he's a doctor of. But he would provide her with the knowledge that would finally allow her to regain her self-confidence and set her on a course that would transform her into the woman we know now. For me, whether it's, whether it's 20 bananas or 10 to 12 persimmon, I'm always gonna end up somewhere around 2,000 calories for my lunch meal. For 10 days, Leanne ate nothing but bananas. She, she literally went full chimp mode. By the end of 2006, she was fully committed to veganism and was expressing opinions that could be associated with, shall we say, the extreme manifestation of the vegan belief. For everybody, because we are designed to eat plant foods, we're not designed to eat animals. Man, only if she were back there a few million years ago to tell those dumb f***ing Neanderthals that they shouldn't eat mammoth because it might give them rumbly tummy. Unfortunately, this was only the the start of her controversial beliefs. Leanne would frequently promote the idea that mental health and many other physical ailments could be prevented simply by adopting her lifestyle. If you are battling with depression, you absolutely have to look at what you're eating first and foremost. The fact that Robin Williams was a big alcoholic says a lot to me as well because alcohol is almost pure carbohydrates, which turns into glucose in the brain, Hence him being attracted to it because he wasn't getting enough clean carbohydrates to his cells from his diet. She would end up adopting the frugivore diet, that being a diet consisting only of raw fruits and occasional nuts and grains. The diet generally sells itself on the premise of allowing you to eat as much as you want during the day, so long as it's fruit. With this diet, carbs are a non-issue, so long as you're cramming bananas down your gullet at every possible interval, you're eating right in Leanne's eyes. In 2007, Leanne created her first YouTube channel, Freely the Banana Girl, where she would post pro-vegan content and promote her beliefs concerning veganism. Something you may have picked up on in her life story is that her switch to veganism wasn't the result of any ethical realization. And in her content, you can see her favoring the promotion of the health and visual benefits of veganism rather than the moral and environmental benefits more commonly seen advertised. This year, her life would also change as she met Harley Johnston, another vegan and fruit-based diet enthusiast. And for the better part of the next decade, the two would become something of a vegan double act. According to Harley, he was chosen by Freely because he was, and I quote, a nice bloke. But who was Harley Johnston? Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about that. that. First time looking at him, you would think, wow, he looks like he has 10% less skin than a normal human. But, but no, that's just because this man has been genetically perfected. All thanks to his own tireless efforts of eating nothing but carbs and cycling like a demon across Terra Nullius. Meet Harley Vesper Johnston, aka Durian Rider. Even less information exists on his life before YouTube, and what little we do know comes from his own mouth, and therefore may not be wholly reliable. He was born somewhere near Adelaide in August of 1997, and in the early 90s was a habitual drug user, going so far as to consider himself an addict. 
Well, here's what's not sustainable, man. That fucking druggy lifestyle. How the fuck do I know? Because I fucking lived it in the 90s, brah. And all my mates who continue living it today got fucked up, brah. He would also claim during this time he spent periods living on the streets and even claims to have spent time in prison. In 1996, he would decide to turn his life around and went about this by gradually prioritizing his own physical fitness over the social drug-related activities of his friends. Eventually, through his pursuits of fitness, he forged new friendships and was able to break away from the negative influences that had previously haunted his life. And then eventually you forge friendships based on fitness when your social group becomes your fitness group and when your fitness group becomes your social group, vice versa, whatever, either way, you become the fittest version of yourself ever. Following this change, he was able to get back on his feet and started working as a personal trainer slash life coach. Sometime around the millennium, he turned vegan and in 2002 transitioned into a raw food diet. Aside from his eating habits, Harley is vehemently against putting anything unnatural into the body. This obviously applies to processed goods and various harmful and unhealthy chemicals found in most food, but it also applies to medicines such as anesthetic and <clears throat> vaccines. So all these deaths from corona, like we've had seven in Australia, seven, and we put the country on lockdown. Don't worry, we'll get to that all in good time. He was also a keen cyclist, hence the rider part of the name. I was genuinely convinced his online name was a common rider meme, but, but, but maybe not. The more I watch this guy, the less I think he knows about Japanese television. Saying he's a keen cyclist doesn't really do him justice. He's a professional long distance cyclist competing in races across the world. Here's the, here's the cool thing with cycling is, especially uphill is, you're gonna have a fallen race and it's just, it's all good fun. It's, everyone gets fit, it's, you know. His cycling escapades would give his dietary advice some legitimacy as it's undeniable he's in remarkable shape for someone of his age. His promoted diet is high carb, low fat, eat a ton of fruit meme, like freely, with him penning a book called Carb the F*** Up, which I'm assuming is just a single page covered in clip art of fruit and veg. It's basically the same meme as Leanne's diet, it's just eat what you want but make sure it's fruit or some shit. As much as you want man, as much as you want. If you want one packet, if you want a quarter of a packet, you're satisfied, great. If you want ten packets, then you need ten packets. He's also well known for his promotion of male vasectomies. He himself had his balls decommissioned sometime in the 2010s, and to this day occasionally puts out content advertising the benefits of castration. Every single one reports enhanced quality of life afterwards. The wives thank me, the girlfriends thank me, the mistresses thank me, the side chicks thank me. You know what I mean? Goes without saying, people are free to do what they want with their balls. And from videos where he discusses humanity, it would appear that part of his pro vasectomy stance comes from a deeper belief in antinatalism. The belief that the world can't support this many humans. And with so many people being born into poverty and suffering, it's immoral for those with a choice to bring any new mouths into the world. A lot of countries around the world, man, it ain't, it ain't good. So, if you think having kids, man, think about adopting. Think before you f in other videos though, his reasons are more, uh, personal. You know, and having kids, this is based on what my friends tell me, what my parents told me, what I see other parents facing every day, is you lose your freedom when you have kids. Your life instantly changes. More stress, more financial pressure, more hormonal issues, more stress, more responsibility, more energy, going to the new baby than going into each other as partners, etc. you know. I would describe Durian Ryder as something of a vegan Andrew Tate. Both prey on people who they know have insecurities and both maintain a healthy balance of sexism, body shaming, and alpha male rhetoric. Hell have no fury like a rejected woman, all right? That's just how it is, guys. You don't understand that. A lot of guys understand that. I'm telling the truth. She's full of shit, you know? And that's, hey, that's women, you know? And, and feminine men. Like the bold Estonian, Harley is incredibly boastful when it comes to showing off his wealth. This is especially funny coming from a die-hard vegan. Clearly Harley has the moral inclination to not eat meat, but not the mental competence to know how sustainable purchasing works. And of course, if you want to be as swole as Harley, you can buy his book from his prefab website. Oh, and look, if you want to be as rich as him, you can buy his time and he'll become your own personal life coach. When trying to sell financial scams, courses, most people at least find a nice sports car or hotel room to pretend they own. Harley just holds like $500 in 
his rotting bedroom. <laughs> in most videos he puts out, you can be sure to find a link to his book, usually accompanied by a jump scare of his chiseled abs and cum gutters. I, I don't think I can show this. Uh, go check the Twitter. I've probably used an uncensored version of this image as a reply to Joe Biden. On top of his main Durian Rider page, he would also make a second Ask Durian Rider channel. Uh, the content on both is basically the same. Uh, I don't know what the f***ing point of having two is. Who knows? Harley uploads a lot, like a lot, a lot, usually once a day on one of his channels. And all these videos are delightfully unscripted. Usually he just rambles on for about 10 minutes, going on wild tangents and slurring his words. So I went to the job agency and in the court the bus, it was like a 40 minute bus ride into the city. And I sit on the bus thing, I should just ridden my bike in. And so I <laughs> caught the bus all dressed up nicely and went in there to the office and I've got this receptionist, this big frumpy Coke Zero drinking receptionist. Truly iconic videos. Now that we know a bit about them, we can start to talk about their online chicanery. And this would all begin with the type of content they put out, more specifically how they advertise their respective fitness programs. Something you quickly notice about Freely is that she doesn't hesitate to show off her physique. Okay, hear me out. If you want to show off your sh** on social media, go for it, not my problem. However, the issue emerges when one considers who her target audience is. If you want to just get clicks from horny men, you know, go for it, girl boss, get your money up. But Freely's fitness program and her content at large seems to be targeted more towards women, and young women at that. This is the age bracket when people are most self-conscious about their appearance and most susceptible to bogus diets and fitness trends. If you're struggling with your diet and your lifestyle and trying to lose that weight and overcome binging, then I recommend my books for sure. All three of them is all my life's work and you'll get a great deal, great discount if you buy them all, all three of them and change your life forever. Her thumbnails are clearly made to show off her slim figure and to emphasize this, she twists her body in inhuman ways to give the illusion she's slimmer than she is. I can't for certain prove these are photoshopped, but like, right, okay, look. Like this, this is uncanny. Looks like a f***ing Junji Ito monster. Leanne is evidently very proud of her appearance and will gladly lecture others on why they aren't as attractive as her. According to her biography on her website, she's frequently mistaken for a woman woman in her 20s. For a woman in her 20s. She wrote that herself, by the way. Harley is equally deceitful about his own physique in regards to what is commonly achievable. By comparing shirtless images, never thought I'd say that, you can see a difference between his natural physique and what he shows off as the purported end result of his diet. Oh yeah, he also uses steroids. He he's admitted to this. Going into your muscle, it definitely does hurt for a couple of days. My left arm, I can feel it's like I've got, got kicked in the arm. Uh... Another question was, where is testosterone derived from? It's soy-based. Now, the manner in which he uses steroids is perfectly legal and within the limits of what is allowed in the respective competitions he competes in. I'm not trying to call him a cheater, however, bear this fact in mind whenever he brags about his physique and how others just don't have the commitment and alphaness to get as swole as he is. Moral of the story, if someone's trying to sell you a diet based upon what their own physique is, odds are they're trying to shame you into following them. They don't have to worry about time spent on their ass at work because this is their work. And as we'll see later, following their diet plans won't just magically have the same effects. In 2009, Freely created a forum known as the 30 Bananas a Day Forum, where her and her fans could post and discuss topics relating to veganism. The forum would at some point be renamed to the Frugivore Diet Forum, and Leanne would pay to keep it up over the next decade. She would also create a personal website called thebananagirl.com. It was more or less her virtual hub, where she would sell her book and skills as a life coach for a considerable premium. Imagine signing your divorce documents with the officially licensed Freely Pen. How much she made from this in comparison to YouTube revenue is unknown, but looking at her constant promotion and elaborate marketing of her programs, I think it's clear that this was a pretty successful system. But if you're having trouble implementing the lifestyle and you're over 200 pounds in particular, I specialize in helping you. So if you want to consult with me a one-on-one -on -one for a limited time only, then check out a link down below and you can read about the consultation. For the next few years, the two would post to YouTube and what they put out is of the quality one would expect from the early days of the website. Freely would anoint her fan base with the epithet Fruit Bats. Hey Fruit Bats, it's Freely the Banana Girl here. Welcome to another episode. Most videos were usually just one of them sat in their bedroom, talking to the camera, giving their dieting tips, or complaining about issues prevalent in the vegan community. They clearly resonated with a significant portion of said community, as their channels would see relative success for early YouTube. Alongside this growth, you could see many small improvements to their content, such as better camera quality and some new slick intro animations. Go through, Jason. 
They would also attempt to add some variation into the type of videos they made, such as adding more skits in between talking segments, doing the occasional travel vlog, and even a bit of classic YouTube pranking. Seen here as Durian Ryder goes to KFC and owns the clearly uncomfortable minimum wage teenagers working there. What's, what's the greasiest food you got here? I want to I want to give someone obesity and heart disease. What do you recommend they eat on a daily basis? I don't know. Anybody, Angus? Yeah, probably has the most uh, ingredients in it. What's with the sarcastic caption, Harley? They work there, they can't conscientiously object. Whilst they had a reputation for being a tad intense when it came to vegan belief, the consensus, at least within the online vegan community, was that they were just playing things up for the camera. Just trying to draw as much attention as possible to themselves as a means to spread the vegan message. I mean, just look at this interview preface someone wrote for Durian Ryder in 2013. Durian Ryder is a controversial health and fitness YouTube celebrity who speaks about the benefits of a healthy lifestyle following the raw food and vegan diet. He's known for his tough love approach, zany sense of humour, and sometimes unconventional approach to getting his point across. This prickly exterior has won him many admirers and a few enemies, much like his namesake Fruit. That's adorable. This reputation would not last forever, as the following years would galvanise internet opinion concerning them. And this would all begin at a vegan event known as the Woodstock Fruit Festival. So way back when, in 2013, veganism wasn't quite the phenomenon it is today. These days, veganism is immensely popular. In the UK, almost 5% of the population are vegan. And its growth in popularity is primarily down to the increasing availability and variety of vegan food and substitutes. Back in 2013, however, whilst vegan food was usually available in most supermarkets, it wouldn't be uncommon for there to just be no vegan option available. As such, the vegan community decided to throw together an event, a festival if you will, that would centre around vegan living and the larger ideas of spirituality associated with the lifestyle. Where attendees wouldn't have to worry about what they were eating, because everything was vegan, so they could just let loose and focus instead on having a gay old time. This event would come to be known as the Woodstock Fruit Festival. There's nobody in my community that eats that way. We'll come to the Fruit Stock Festival, man. It's gonna be crazy. People from all around the world. We've come from Australia. Looking at the promotional material put up on the official channel, it's evident there was a wide variety of events, such as lectures from medicine men, live music, and a good old fashioned dance around the fire. Harley and Leanne would start to attend the event in 2011, both as celebrity guests, with Harley even having a seat on the Council of Pioneers, the exclusive group for the biggest names in the vegan community and those with the largest audiences to spread the word of the festival. Durian Ryder, how do you spell that? D-U-R-I-A-N-R-I-D-E-R-S. Great writers today. Their attendance at the Woodstock Cuck Festival would go by with little controversy, at least for the first two years. However, in 2013, the pair would cut ties with the festival and its organisers. The exact reasons for their departure is pretty murky. It's claimed one of the reasons was Leanne's diet, Raw Till 4, not conforming to the standards of the festival organisers. But let's get rid of them, because they're evil, because they promote a backup plan. They tell people that starches are okay if you can't get enough fruit, versus creating an elitist group. Here's the next point. Doug says we should not be an elitist group, but gives and, you know, but, and give people options. But then Doug says raw is the law. I don't recommend eating cooked food. Raw is law. However, other claims have emerged that Harley was kicked off owing to behind-the-scenes politics among the pioneers that resulted in him being booted from the board of organisers. Now, after being kicked from Woodstock, Harley and Leanne decided to seize the initiative and put together their own vegan festival. And this one would be bigger and better than the squares over in New York. They would hold the festival in Chiang Mai, Thailand, a place that was already far more vegan-friendly. People would still come from all over the world to join the festivities, and at the centre of it all were Leanne and Harley. The itinerary of the festival was more relaxed, with the only real scheduled events being lectures presented by the two and group bike rides and trips to restaurants. Over the next couple years, the festival would go through a few logistical changes Changes. Firstly, it would be renamed to the Raw Till 4 Festival, a nice bit of tie-in marketing to Leanne's brand, and secondly, more focus would be placed upon the cycling element. The bike thing was a serious meme by the way, Harley instructs potential attendees to bring a bike, otherwise they may not be able to participate to the fullest. The festival would serve as the backdrop for many notable controversies, however they would mainly take place in the later years of the festival, so we'll, uh, we'll touch on those in a bit. By this point in time, the internet was beginning to become aware of these two and their antics. For Leanne, this came in the form of other, mostly female YouTubers picking apart her diet advice, as well as her occasional outbursts against other YouTubers. For Harley, well, he seemed to stay under the radar, having a far smaller channel, and viewed more as a limpet attached to Leanne. But the festival and his channel growth during this period would give him a reputation as notorious, if not worse, than Leanne. They both still had hardcore fans and followers in the hundreds of thousands, but now you couldn't really discuss them without addressing their 
volatile nature. I think a video that summarizes this well is one posted by Harley where he recounts a confrontation between Leanne and a driver. Despite Harley's best wording, it sounds like Leanne flipped off a motorist, then started verbally berating her. Freely, so Freely gave her some uh, some uh, hand gestures indicating move the f over because you're risking my life. And the undercar lady didn't really un appreciate that. She got out of the car, freely gave it to her. Harley, who can't think of an actual valid insult, just defaults to calling her undercarbed. Everyone's life at risk, just an undercarbed, strung out, crackhead almost. Uh. Apparently she was driving too close to Leanne, endangering her life. But this version of events isn't helped by the accompanying video of them dipping between traffic and going through red lights. Oh yeah, and Harley made sure to post this woman's actual face and car registration on his YouTube. I'm gonna put it on YouTube. I had to blur this, this was me. And this takes us to the year of 2015. This would be a year marked by a few notable events for Leanne and Harley, both personal and public. On the public side, the two would find themselves involved in some legal hot water, owing to allegations of defamation from one Kayla Itznays. It's sins, it signs, it, it sinays. Kayla Epstein is another Aussie fitness guru. Kayla pioneered the BBG or Bikini Body Guide, a routine that encourages short, high intensity workouts and limiting oneself to around 1,700 calories per day. The diet itself has received pretty strong criticism for basically being a f and not a healthy way to lose weight. Leanne and Harley would go after her, calling her diet fake and insulting her personally, prompting the lawsuit. And today I want to talk about Ka Kayla Etzine's starvation diet, okay? That's what I want to talk about. Harley would also accuse her boyfriend of using steroids, an accusation with the potential to harm the brand of the accused, considering he was also a fitness influencer. Diet and fitness guru Kayla Itzinas has gone to court to defend her bikini body guide against an alleged online attack by a rival. It's claimed freely the banana girl and her partner launched a YouTube assault against the Adelaide-based fitness guru. It wouldn't make it all the way to court, however, as the three of them would settle the matter privately. Whilst we don't know the exact details of what terms were reached, the pair never mentioned Kayla again, and some of the videos concerning her were quietly taken off YouTube. The year of 2015 was also when the two would go on what is best described as a break. According to Harley, it was initiated by Leanne, who sometime in October decided it best if the two spent some time apart. Leanne would return to Australia, but Harley would stick around in Thailand for a while. The break would only last a few months, but during this period, Harley would claim to have been sexually intimate with multiple other women. Whilst Leanne, from what we know, seems to have remained faithful to Harley even during this unsure period of their relationship. October 2015, uh, Freely broke up with me, and then went back to Australia, and we got back together. But during that time apart, then I got with a few other women. In 2016, during the Thai Fruit Festival, Harley would publicly accuse Canadian vegan influencer Aizul Mazard of attempting to solicit money and sex from underage girls. Now, Mazard had been on Harley's radar for some time, as on his YouTube he would frequently make videos criticising other members of the vegan community, notably criticising Leanne and Harley for what he described as their lifestyle activism. And these people are so deeply into so-called lifestyle activism that the real meaning of activism has been forgotten to them. Or the manner in which they focus most of their energy into showing off their bodies and shaming others rather than actually striving to make a positive change in the world. Harley would suddenly become a champion for female essay victims everywhere, believing all women, and launching into a Facebook tirade against Mazard. Mazard would obviously dispute the allegations via Facebook inviting Harley to talk privately so they could resolve the issue away from the public eye. Harley evidently wasn't into this and would casually imply that he or those in his close circle were actively looking for him in Chiang Mai. Harley seemed to have an innocent until I find you in the street mentality. For someone with such a large and devoted follower base, it's incredibly dangerous to tell your fans to go and fight your enemies in the streets. Harley would go on to publicly state that he believed violence was the best way to deal with predators, and demanded that Mazard publicly apologise to Freely who he had previously insulted in one of his videos. This apology to Leanne would quickly become as important to Harley as the resolution of the alleged underage messaging. This is also where Harley would claim to have spent time in the slammer. Man, Harley is, is really into violence against alleged predators. I hope this belief ages well. Mazard offered to go with Harley to the Thai authorities to sort it out, however Harley seemed uninterested in this, and demanded he reveal his passport info, so Mazard's name could be checked against the Canadian Sex Offender Registry. Side note, Mazard is a lecturer in China 
China, which would seem to indicate any background check to get such a job would have uncovered any criminal history. However, Harley persisted, leading Mazard to post his passport and other pertinent documents on his Facebook, with critical info covered, just to satisfy Harley. Harley claimed these documents were fabricated. Okay, oh, f this is actually brain dead. <laughs> this would prompt Hannah Chloe, another vegan influencer, to come out and make a video alleging that Harley had attempted to forcefully seduce her whilst the two of them were in Chiang Mai the year before. The whole situation revolved around a book she was writing. Harley, being something of an authority in writing fitness books, had offered to look at it and provide feedback. So I offered to show it to him and I said that I'd just go up and grab my computer and he said that he'd come up as well because he wanted to use my bathroom. In return, Chloe, being a skilled visual designer, agreed to help him make a banner for his main YouTube channel. This is the same banner he still uses to this day. I, 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 don't, I don't really get it. But then again, I'm not a visual designer. I'm just a man with a guitar. Wait, what? They would meet a few times without incident. However, allegedly, one night the two were alone and Harley requested that she kiss him which she refused. But he would persist and over multiple days attempt to become intimate with her, resulting in them having intercourse, and her believing she was pressured into it after the fact. In the aftermath of her video revealing all this, Harley would obviously deny her version of events, instead claiming the act was consensual and she was simply clout chasing and trying to create drama for views. One weird dynamic that complicates this case is the boyfriend of Hannah, a man named Michael Hebo, aka Norvegan. Michael was a vegan, and a Norwegian- oh fuck, I get it! And he would create an extensive five-part documentary psychoanalyzing Harley, as well as countless other smaller videos all critical of him. Hebo and Hannah were apparently dating at the time the incident with Harley took place. Harley would frame all these videos and the documentary as the actions of a jealous boyfriend who got cucked and was now trying to destroy Harley out of spite. Whether this is true is anyone's guess. Harley, when referencing Michael, is clearly trying to get under his skin, alluding to how unfaithful his girlfriend was. So, okay, one example- okay, this is- real by the way, Harley would claim he was actually the one who was raped because she sucked on his penis so hard it bruised. You know, I had physical injury, you know, my pelvis was so sore the next day I sort of missed out on the time trial, I had testicular, what would you even call it, um, you know, vacuuming or from the mouth or whatever, just, you know, it's quite sore. Hebo would leave YouTube around 2019, but all of his videos remain up. This case was never resolved, simply remaining as allegations and counter-allegations. Harley still spoke about it years later, so clearly he wasn't put off by discussion and speculation about the event, and it will still be brought up as one of the bigger Jury and Rider controversies. Presumably, over the summer, Harley and Leanne would re-establish contact and resume their relationship. In 2016, Leanne would launch a new fitness program, along with a guide available for purchase at any disputable retailer. This diet was called Raw Till 4 and promise to help users effortlessly lose weight, all while eating as much as they want. The basic gist of the diet is that until 4pm you can only eat raw fruit and then have a big cooked dinner where you get the majority of your daily nutrients. The diet also includes guidelines for stuff like water intake, exercise and even emotional guidance. Man, this really sounds like the greatest guide on earth. I'm sure it's held in good repute by professionals. Yeah, the diet's highly flawed, just like the others they promote, most notably the selling point of eating unlimited calories. <laughs> Whilst calories are not the most important thing to consider when losing weight, eating as much as you want is not going to assist in weight loss. As per usual, the main way she advertises the diet is by showing off all the thin, beautiful people who followed it. See? This could be you, all for the low, low price of $39.95. As for Harley, he found himself in another controversy of his own making when he decided to go to war with a cancer patient. Jen Felici was a vegan who had previously attended the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Following a cancer diagnosis and with no way to afford expensive treatment, she turned to the internet to ask for help from anyone who could donate. Despite what to most would seem a heartwarming instance of strangers coming together to help someone in need, Harley saw a woman trying to feign illness for money, and so would selflessly take it upon himself to warn the world. You're f***ing ass all your life, and then one day go, hey, I need some money. Give it to me. Give it to me, strangers. You want evidence? I'm not going to give you, oh, why do I have to give you evidence? Just that level of ungratefulness really rubs me the wrong way. What a hero. His disdain for Jen seemed to mostly come from the method of treatment she had decided to raise the money for. A Gerson clinic somewhere in Mexico. The Gerson treatment is very sus, medically. The man he created it had his medical license suspended and then died of pneumonia. However, if one imagines themselves in her situation, I think it's understandable you would want to try whatever treatment you possibly could. Even if the treatment was iffy, blame the people promoting the treatment and not the cancer patient trying to save their own life. Surrounding the case, there's a lot of discourse concerning whether Jen was herself being scammed by the treatment 
treatment clinic and the doctor treating her. But regardless, focus your anger on the people scamming cancer patients and not the patients themselves. Harley would come out and tell his audience he thought it was a scam and that Jen was a scammer. To disprove him, she would publish relevant medical documents and even chose to show the cancerous growth to the world in a pretty graphic video. But Harley just chalked this up to a bit of makeup and crocodile tears. As a result of his video, her donations saw a significant decline, and despite checking herself into a clinic for treatment, she would pass away in April. Harley offered his sincere apologies. I apologize to Jen's family, like, who? I, where's the contact? Who are they? I don't even know. Like, who are these people, you idiots? Like, who? Give me the phone number. Like, what? And what contact? What do I say? Like, who? Who? What? For when? What did I do wrong? Around April or May, Leanne and Harley headed over to the human waste disposal that is Los Angeles. I don't know why I'm being so mean to LA. <laughs> For them, this trip was a huge networking affair, with Leanne appearing on countless other channels doing your standard super positive YouTube collab type shit that was popular among white girls in 2016. Aside from the YouTube related stuff, the two would meet up and dine with countless other YouTube acquaintances, such as Shane Dawson, Trisha Paytas, uh, whoever these guys are. Oh, and oh my god, Kalal. Oh, finally, it's all come full circle. Oh, look at this table. Actual nightmare blunt rotation. I would pay distressing amounts of money just to know what they were talking about. In June or July of 2016, the unthinkable would happen. After a beautiful decade together, it would be revealed during interviews that the two had decided to end their relationship. Harley stated this final breakup was initiated by himself, and Leanne was less than happy at his choice. It was it June or July 2016 where I said to Freely, we're in an apartment in Chiang Mai, we're having a bit of a bit of a, a verbal disagreement, and uh, I said, I think we should break up. She's like, Just, what? I said, yeah, and I was pissed. I was in a bit of a mood, and I said, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. And she's like, she didn't like that at all. One thing he keeps mentioning is that how in hindsight he regrets ending the relationship as he was stressed at the time. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was a bit, come from a place of a little bit spiteful, I had probably a little bit of ounce of malice in there as well, and it was just a really f stupid time to make him life decisions like that, okay? And shouldn't have held her to the standards of a normal relationship when the two of them were both celebrities. I was putting traditional relationship rules on a relationship that me and Leanne had together that was totally not traditional. Like, I mean, we were like, you know, full on celebrities. Even today, we're still celebrities. Initially, one may be mistaken for thinking this was an amicable breakup. After all, the two seemed to be keeping the exact details of why they split to themselves, and all the videos they had made featuring each other remained up for all to see, even with respective channel links left intact below. But as these things usually go, it didn't take long for the two of them to begin feuding, in what can best be described as a virtual screaming match, as they both hurl allegations at each other with neither taking the time to disprove the points made by the other. It's quite hard to talk about the breakup, as to this day, new videos keep being made by Harley where he reveals little nuggets of information. However, Harley being Harley, these details seem to change depending on what point he wants to make. So yeah, take his accounts with a grain of salt. Shortly after the breakup, Harley would put out a video where he emotionally recounted the both mental and physical abuse he was subjected to during their time together. And he actually admits to hitting her as well. However, only in self-defense. But then last year, you know, and I'd, I'd hit her back. You know, I think if you're gonna hit like a man, then you gotta, you gotta get, Got to get hit back, and I never ever hit Freely in the face. I never ever used any more force than was needed. Leanne, in response, would fully deny that she was as abusive as he stated. However, she did mention that during their relationship, there were altercations where they would engage in physical violence with one another. She would claim that Harley on multiple occasions hit her completely unprovoked. He punched me in the face with his fist after I affectionately nibbled on his ear, which was apparently sore. <laughs> He reacted by punching me in the face and saying, why the fuck did you do that? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this would prompt a flurry of videos from both parties where they both defend themselves and attempt to smear the other. Yeah, did you punch her in the face? I've already addressed that in one of my videos. No, um, there was a slap. She bit into my ear. I've got like a solar keratosis on my ear. And she chomped into that. And it was just like a reaction because it was just like, ah. The videos usually contain very little substance and are just unprovable anecdotes and vague threats that would go nowhere and never get mentioned again. Harley at one point shows a clip of them play fighting in the background of another video and uses this as proof of Leanne's violent behavior. Have little, let's have a little, uh, have a watch this video and you can see who is, you think, who was the violent person in our relationship. Have a look at this.
Bloody hell, it was in plain sight the entire time. That's very odd coming from a man who claimed violence is second nature to him. Regardless of who's telling the truth, I'm assuming the truth lies somewhere in the middle, it's clear that this was an incredibly unhealthy relationship, despite their furious boasting of how happy they were together. Soon after the breakup, Freely would reveal to the world her new partner, a man by the name of Robin Haag. Robin was Swedish or some shit, who came to Australia to live the true vegan lifestyle. He was also a vegan influencer, using his channel Snowpea to carve out a niche in the vegan rock climber community. Man, this guy really likes fruit and, and climbing rocks. As the decade went on, he would upload less and less, soon reaching under one upload per year, and has only recently started uploading again. Around this time, Harley would claim that Leanne had been using Botox and hiding it from himself and the fan base. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Freely does, oh sorry, did Botox. I don't know what she's doing now. I mean, I saw her last August. She says it was a couple of months ago. Looking at comments breaking down her appearance in recent videos, there does seem to be some serious debate over whether she's altered her appearance in any such way. All I see is a woman in her 20s. Now, people were saying, people have said that she, when she disappears for a while, she's not showing herself for a while. It's like she goes away for a few months and then she comes back with a new face. Like this looks like Freely. This looks like more of a natural expressive face. And then this looks like, I don't know, something done to it. Harley himself has actually undergone some visual alteration, in this case for his teeth, getting them capped and painted a glistening white. He was actually very open about this operation when it happened, blaming the state of his teeth before on all the bare knuckle fight club boxing he did in the 90s, what? In the 90s, we used to get into boxing and sparring with no mouth guard. We'd have gloves, but no mouth guards. Even when I was doing a training with karate stuff, I'd forget my mouth guard, my sense would go, that's okay, but you get out through your teeth. But when you're that young, you're just like, yeah, fuck it. I was always to spit out little chips of teeth now and then. I think, yeah, I'm fucking angry. So I've got to spit out into it. You should just think it's pretty cool. Yeah, Harley, boxing, I'm sure. Did your opponents punch only the very ends of your teeth out? <laughs> Towards the end of 2016, the vegan community on YouTube would be shooketh by the trend of notable vegan influencers announcing that they would no longer be strictly vegan. And in most of the videos, they would usually provide some fairly sound reason for their decision, such as health issues or general disillusionment with the vegan movement. Freely, in the face of this, went on the warpath, publishing countless videos where she rips into these various traitors. People who actually give a fuck about animals do not give up on them. They do not throw them in a stir fry when they feel hungry or gassy or get a pimply face. They take responsibility and they do not stop until they find a cruelty free answer to the issues. So in late 2016, Leanne shot out a video called I Forced My Younger Boyfriend to Get a Vasectomy. The title is clearly inflammatory, trying to bait engagement, as she immediately clarifies that her boyfriend Robin chose to have the vasectomy. However, regardless when discussing Leanne, people will sometimes claim that she forced her boyfriend to get a vasectomy. However, this just doesn't seem to be the case. Twenty seventeen would begin with a video emerging of Harley yelling at a motorist who had overtaken him on a narrow road. Harley believed the driver had just endangered his life and would somehow get him to stop his car and would then dismount his bike to verbally berate him. Screaming that the driver had intended to kill him, he would then unleash a slurry of threats. However, the audio was conveniently cut from the video. Nice of Harley to censor his own verbal outburst, yet leave every personal detail of the driver available for all to see. This incident would make the news, with the event being reported on by local television. Best part about it was seeing this woman say freely the banana girl out loud. Well, controversial vegan blogger Harley Johnston rose to fame as the partner of social media star Freely, the Banana Girl. In 2017, Leanne and Robin would decide to move to Cape Tribulation in Queensland to live off-grid in a small patch of jungle, where they would be, in their own words, completely self-sufficient and not contribute to the worldwide destruction of the environment. From their jungle compound, they would grow all their produce, sunbathe, and enjoy the bounty of Mother Nature. Man, Leanne is a true bushman, surviving off only the stuff she grows and the beauty products that get airdropped into her camp. These are now my favourite shampoo and conditioner bars, which contain all natural plant-based ingredients. 
Okay, okay, maybe she's getting a bit of outside help, but, but it's the effort that matters. And truthfully, you can't deny this does look like Ted Kaczynski's wet dream. Harley, when speaking of this development, claimed she had to install a colossal smoke-spewing diesel generator that ran 24-7 to power her various gadgets and contraptions. Is this true? Who knows? Probably not. After the move to Cape Tribulation, the pair would relocate to Ecuador for a brief period. They would only remain there for a few months and would soon make their way back to Cape Tribulation. Around the same time Leanne departed civilization, Harley decided it was time to settle down and grab a new long-term partner. And that came in the form of 26-year-old Natasha Miklik. If you look up Natasha now, you'll see what just appears to be a standard fitness guru. However, when you study her socials, it quickly becomes apparent her online brand took a dramatic shift towards the influencer space when Harley entered her life. Hell, on an over 100k YouTube channel, Harley features in her earliest videos. And from that point onwards, uh, her brand consists mostly of ass shots, clubbing, and more ass shots. You know, nothing wrong with that, you know, get your money up. She even has an OnlyFans. Harley appears to fill the role of sugar daddy. That's from his own mouth. Natasha, what's it like dating someone the same age as your dad? <laughs> pros and cons. <laughs> yeah. What are the pros? Pros are a free place to live. Gold Financial digger. Financial security. Gold digger. Big dick. At least that's what he's described as when he took her to the most intense rave in Australia. Damn, man, that looks fright that's, that's frightening for little old me. You know it's a good rave when they have cleaners working during the event. Not much would transpire for the following year. So since like 2015, Harley would occasionally make videos about Joe Rogan, host of the iconic Joe Rogan podcast. And in 2019, Harley would start trying to beef with Joe when he made a series of videos making fun of and critiquing his appearance and dietary advice. Oh, you're a f***ing dickhead, Joe Rogan. You're a dumb cunt. You're a dumb f you are such a good talker, but you're really good at talking sh that's really f***ing dumb. I say beefing, Jogan never responded. It's quite clear Harley really wants to get on the podcast, since it would mean a lot of exposure. But obviously he isn't humble enough just to say that he would love to go on the show. So he does this bizarre bit where he says he loves Joe Rogan, even though he's a drugged up meat-eating dunce. My tip to Joe, get off the f bongs, mate. Get off the f bongs, because some of the shit that dribbles from your mouth, man. And he would love to go on and have a chat with him, but you know, he's just too controversial, too raw, too real. There's no fucking way Joe would have someone like me on his show. Because I don't abide by the fucking rules. And that's fine, that's fair enough, it's his podcast, his show. Meanwhile, Leanne would make a new YouTube channel named The Frugivore Diet. From the name, you'd be mistaken for thinking this was a place dedicated purely to content relating to the diet. However, it's basically indistinguishable from the main Freely channel. If anything, The Frugivore Diet channel seems to be more focused on content going after other influencers and their diets. Oh no, even Kalal catches some heat. Leave her alone, Leanne. She's just searching for a sexy Korean Namja Chingu. Mian heyo. So in January of 2020, handheld footage emerged of a man dressed in cycling gear being held underfoot by a blurred assailant. According to Harley's testimony, he and Natasha were out shopping for fruit when without warning, a man came from behind and hit him on the back of the head, knocking him unconscious instantly, before proceeding to smash his head into the pavement multiple times whilst accusing Harley of being a paedophile. He was then hospitalized for 24 hours and upon being discharged, made a video where he spoke about his experience of the event claiming that he actually knew the attacker as he was a friend of Joey Carbstrong, another vegan influencer he had beefed with in the past. Love or hate the guy, calculated physical violence crosses a line. But don't worry, in the video, Harley affirms he was a very brave boy. Am I okay? I'm alive. You know, I'm alive. Even if this is a fan of Joey, I'm doubtful he was deliberately sent to attack Harley. I don't think vegan influencer beef has quite escalated to cartel-style hit squads just yet. Although this guy is clearly more demented than any Sicario you would find south of Mexico. A single video from a small channel dedicated to defending Harley claims the man was convicted and given a prison sentence, but I couldn't find any official records and the channel seems very pro Durian Rider, so we can't know for certain what happened. By mid-2020, the world was firmly in the grip of the Corona-19 pandemic. Man, I wonder what my favorite vegan YouTubers are doing with themselves during this time. Leanne living off-grid wasn't necessarily in the firing line for the major societal impacts of the pandemic and resulting lockdown. Her simplified opinion was that the virus was being used as an excuse for the government to increase surveillance. So you could be fined or even thrown in jail for going outside in a group protesting about not being able to go outside. And you still think you're living in a democracy? 
This smells more like totalitarianism to me. And the vaccine was a big conspiracy with the medical companies profiting and that the vaccine contained all sorts of poison. There is a little known deal here that protects drug companies in the US from being sued. So for every other drug other than vaccines, the manufacturer can be legally liable for any injury that results from a product they sell. But vaccines are produced by privately held pharmaceutical companies. So they have this like unique arrangement with the US government. So when a person reports any injury that could be related to the vaccine, a government program, not a pharmaceutical company, pays the compensation. She would encourage her audience to follow in her footsteps and become self-sufficient. She instructs them to buy land, grow their own food, and stockpile as much aluminum and metal oxide as possible. The work might be hard, but it is so rewarding. It is so rewarding to have your own food and to save so much money and not be dependent on that unstable food system. I wonder how Harley was doing, being stuck in an urban environment. You can trust your government, you know what I mean? Like, your government cares for you. Like, dishonest people don't end up in, you know, like, like, you know? Yeah, Durian Ryder wasn't big on the whole vaccination thing either. In his eyes, the virus was nowhere near as deadly as the media would have you believe. So all these deaths from corona, like we've had seven in Australia, seven, and we've put the country on lockdown, you know, where people can't even fly into Australia, certain types of people can't fly in Australia, blah, 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 for seven deaths. Those that died had other issues going on, like they were old, or fat, or had weak immune systems. He primarily opposed the vaccine due to the unnatural chemicals it would introduce to your body. The only chemicals Harley needs are carbohydrates and potassium and steroids. As mentioned earlier, Leanne and Robin were now living in the jungles near Cape Tribulation. And sometime in mid-2022, Harley would pay the pair a visit when he came on his bike to their literal doorstep, uninvited and unwanted. You, uh, you came into our property. It's like me coming into your house. Why would you come in here without even saying anything? You gotta, you gotta go. You gotta go. Yeah, I was Leanne would put out a video where she informed her audience of the ordeal, emphasizing the perceived danger Harley posed to the pair, and affirming her stance of not responding to Harley's provocation, believing he's only doing it for attention and views. Harley, however, would claim that after the confrontation scene in the footage, they all calmed down and had a nice little chit chat and a milky brew. Shame he has no fucking evidence of this. Like, maybe two minutes of sort of tension. A little bit of tension here and there, and then they realised, you know, it was all good. Watch out, she jump cuts all the bits where we're hanging out, we're hugging, and we're talking, and we're making progress, and it was all good, alright? She left that bit out, didn't she? Hmm. Leanne likewise claims Harley began to cry after the confrontation. And I hugged him because he's crying, and I'm like, trying to help, and I thought we came to a good place, and look what happens. He just ends up going at it again because he... It's like he wants to get rid of Robin. She actually says she has the footage, but refuses to release it. Oh my god, these fucking guys- Is there a gas leak in Australia somewhere? Oh, you're sure, they'll fling as much as they can at each other, but, but no, Leanne would never upload a video of Harley crying. That's just beneath her. Goes without saying, they're both clearly lying to make themselves look better. Around the time of all this fun, Harley made a video where he claimed Leanne and Robin were in legal trouble because of Robin overstaying his visa, and therefore living in Cape Tribulation illegally. So, someone sent a Snapchat I saw freely getting- you know, Robin was put in the paddy wagon, freely was being tortured by the cops, you know, boom, this happened, blah, 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 blah. Like, he spends most of the video just giving his own hot takes on immigration. I won't mention it, but, you know, certain races, well, certain races, not certain races, certain nationalities are a bit more prone to causing problems in Australia, okay? Certain individuals, we should say, from certain countries. Why don't we send them back, okay? <laughs> I was unable to find any actual official records of this situation anywhere, meaning either Leanne and Robin resolved the situation quickly or Harley fabricated the entire thing to stir up controversy. You know, recently said that I'm, I was arrested and my partner's here illegally, both which is just blatant lie. He is here legally. I have not been arrested. You know, things like this, I can see people believe it. That's, that's a bad thing. You know, people believe these lies because he's so manipulative. He also addresses many accusations presented by Freely. Such allegations include him stalking her, to which he explains away as him visiting a place he's frequently visited for many years. In this case, a spot in Cape Tribulation that he had been staying at since before she moved up there. And by pure coincidence, she happened to move into the patch of jungle right next door. I've been to almost every property that has a fruit orchard in Cape Tribulation, okay? I've been going there since 2001. There's, there's not many people in Australia who know Cape Tribulation as good as me. 
Okay. Maybe. In the same video, however, he outright states he visited Leanne and Robin for what he describes as a mental health check. And to make sure she was still there. She's in Cape Tribulation. I went to a place last year to confirm that. I also wanted to go there for a health check-in, a mental health check-in. I wanted to, I could see that they were both suffering, her and Robin. Mental health has declined rapidly. And if you've got open eyes, you can see that, all right? There's, there's no news there. And I felt sad, all right? So I thought, I want to go there, you know, s see how they're going. They're not doing well. I want to sort of, I'm the only person who's going to do that. All right. He also revealed that during one of their alleged physical altercations, she punched him in the head and pulled a knife on him. He makes sure to clarify that he didn't feel threatened by this action. He's, he's a true Aussie icon. She pulled a knife on me one time in a house in, in Gold Coast. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, fair, calm down. You can see a pattern here. For every reasonable and sympathetic point he makes, his ego comes in clutch and makes him sound like a knobhead once again. She loves the drama, all right? And a lot of women do. Women love drama, all right? You know, women, and women can't calm unless the guy can give her some drama. Right? Women just, a lot of guys don't understand that. Right? They're just like, mm. a lot of women right now go, yep, yeah, it's true, right? If you can't create emotion, you can't make a girl calm. As simple as that, okay? If you can't, and if you can't make her calm, she can't feel much emotion for you. He truly has mastered the art of the backhanded compliment. In this instance, he casually mentions how he was a diehard vegan cyclist in 2001, when Freely was nothing more than a common city skank. One, right? When Freely was eating meat pies, and barfing up at Macca's or whatever, popping plan B pills, hanging out with the f boys at the rave parties. Hey, nothing wrong with that. A lot of girls do that in Sydney. I was out there on my bike, bike packing around France, doing races, eating right till four, okay? In 2001. Just saying, okay? Again, you see his deliberate use of language. He has everything sorted out. He saved freely. And he can save you for only $250. Also, sorry, why is this video in like 8K? You're telling me this guy made every video on his laptop webcam, but had a f***ing IMAX on hand if ever he needed to be real with his audience. So women out there, do you have any advice? Men out there, do you have any advice? Okay? <laughs> what would you do if every day you wake up and someone's like, you're a rapist, your ex-girlfriend said you're a rapist, she said you're a pedophile, what would you do? That is a cracking call to action. To this day, Harley continues to slip Freely's name into his video titles, and now talks of her using almost exclusively backhanded compliments. His general tactic now is to talk about Leanne as if she were just a pretty face for his business, and that he was in fact wholly responsible for the growth of her online brand. Freely is the promo girl. She didn't come up with sh okay? Respectfully saying. She's the promo girl that I use to push a fantastic message and Freely really did well with that. These days, he still uploads his usual mix of cycling content and bizarre demented rants and seems to be doing decently okay in terms of views. Or okay enough that it only makes sense for him to keep on doing what he's doing. Most recently, he seems to have gotten into selling trainers, bragging in videos about his drop shipping enterprise. All right, so you can sort of see all these orders today. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so that's the orders we're gonna send out today. It's almost certain he'll continue to be involved in minor drama and observed with disdain by the larger internet. But as the golden age of vegan YouTube is over, it's unknown what will eventually happen to him. As for Leanne, whilst the main channel remains inactive, she still occasionally uploads to the Frugivore Diet channel. On Frugivore Diet, most of her videos seem to be weird, vertical, TikTok-esque, minute-long affairs that seem to be just YouTube shorts that she couldn't quite make brief enough. She now focuses most of her attention on TikTok diet influencers, where she criticizes the perceived implausibility of their diets. See what I mean? This is just such a scam. This is such a scam. This is coming from the woman who told you to eat 30 bananas in a day. She is, she's a very, very deceptive, suspicious one, suspicious one. I like when she talks in front of the green screen. It's like if ISIS decided to film a hostage video in a rainforest cafe. Whilst it's funny to see that eat 30 bananas a day woman call other women stupid for eating just steak and butter, she seems to focus less on attacking the appearance of her subjects. And as a result, these videos aren't too bad. Wings, oh my God, I've never eaten anything like it. Mango habanero, whatever they're called, beautiful, follow me. I mean, I I'm sorry, but I barely understood what she was saying because... What's the fatty fat, bitch? What was that? Um, because she does have a strong accent. I completely agree, Leanne. I can barely f***ing understand what she's trying to say. Tragedy would strike Freely's community, as in February of 2023, the long-standing Frugivore Diet Forum would shut down permanently. The simple reason Freely gave is that she could no longer afford to keep up a site that all things considered wouldn't be bringing in much money. She announced its closure in a big final post, where she let people know they could still engage with the community in the comments of her other social medias. 
I'm gonna go on a limb and assume anybody using this forum is probably aware of who you are and your pre-existing socials. And that's where things end for Freely. She still posts occasionally on her various channels, still critiquing others, and still showing off her sick off-grid living. Her and Robin seem content enough, it's unknown how long they plan to keep living out there. Who knows, maybe they'll spend the rest of their days out in the sticks, eating nuts and whatever hair products Leanne gets sent. But I reckon sometime in the future they'll make their way back to civilization, and when they do, who knows what mischief they'll get up to. Hey, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Quick, cue the outro. <laughs>